All right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. My name is Bo, I'm here with Ace Lab. We are helping out hosting today's event, The Art of Division with Radar. We've got Luke Siegel here presenting. Um, so he's gonna be giving a product deep dive into Radar's products and the customization options that are available. I'm really excited, this is a new topic. So we're really excited to uh, present this for you all today. Um, I'm gonna let my colleague help. Ellen. Looks like I froze a bit. Maybe I'll turn my video off. There we go. Um, can you all hear me okay? Yes, we can hear cool. you both. All right, I'm gonna hand it over to Helen. She's gonna give a quick little intro about Ace Lab, um, show you guys how to reach out to Raydor after today's event if you've got any questions, as well as some of the other features that we offer. And then we'll go ahead and get started with today's presentation. Awesome, thanks Bo. Can you all see my screen? Yep. Okay, awesome. Hi everyone, I'm Helen. I'm the Director of Architect Experience here at Ace Lab. That essentially that means I want all of you architects to have a fantastic time using Ace Lab. So um, in addition to the webinars that we host, we also, as you all probably know, allow you to search for things. But something else I wanna talk about is that sometimes when you're searching for items on Ace Lab, you might still end up with a ton of different choices. Um, I often call the search quizzes we go through is you doing your homework before you show up on the desk of a material expert. There's quite a few different places in the app, um, including the live chat. You can reach out to our team of experts and we can help you out. So I want to show you just a quick example of that today and also who our experts are. So here is some of the team that uh, we tap when you come in with a question. Um, Andre has been working for 25 plus years. He is kind of that materials guru that you would go bother when you were starting out. Um, Aaron Pine, a uh, veteran spec writer. If you're on the Northeast, you might know him. Steven is a facade consultant. So all these folks, if you come in to um, live chat with a question or if you're taking a quiz, there's a section there of expert recommendations. These are the folks that'll then help um, answer your question. So I wanted to just walk through um, this little example here. Something we did recently, uh, someone reached out, they're looking for aluminum windows, working with their mechanical engineer, needed a specific um, solar heat gain coefficient. So um, we were able to kind of put this together for them. If you haven't looked at our um, kind of comparison functionality, I'll just quickly blaze through it. Um, but this is really awesome. So when you reach out to us, you'll get some comments back about recommendations for this and then all of this can be side-by-side -side information. So y'all are really looking apples to apples across all four of the products that we've recommended in this example. You'll be able to see sizes, finishes, um, and then performance data. Again, for windows, important for doors, like what Luke's gonna talk about as well. Um, so this is all the information that when you come to us with a question, our team can help put this together for you to make sure that you're making the right decision for the product, um, sorry, for your project. One other thing here too, is if after this presentation, you wanna connect directly with the folks at Radar or any other company, come up here to the top um, search bar, actually jump back in here, and you can type in the um, letters here. We've recently updated this. So categories would be, you know, windows, doors, et cetera. Make sure you select brands. Um, and then you can come here, we can see Radar, jump into this page. You'll be able to connect directly with this team, get the information you need. Also, as you scroll on down, you'll be able to see all of their products listed in one place. Um, if any of y'all are interested in some additional training on how to kind of collaborate across your project teams, um, what that expert help might look like, feel free to book a session with me and I will pass it back to the lovely uh, Luke there. All right, thanks y'all. Thanks so much, Helen. All right, Luke, feel free to take it away whenever you're ready. Um, and just yeah. want to thank everyone in the audience, please feel free to submit questions throughout today's presentation to the Q&A um, so that we can have a record of those and try to get to them today during the event. All right, over to you, Luke. Thanks very much, Bo and Helen. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm gonna jump right to screen share so you can hopefully all make sure the technology is working for you. Um, on your screen, you should see a, um, a little animated GIF there with the art of division. I just want to say off the bat, um, we've been doing presentations with Ace Lab and it's been great audiences and a great experience. I really think what they're doing is amazing and um, really honored to be working with them on this. So today, um, this is a, uh, a first time I'm ever delivering a, a customizations presentation. So ordinarily, 
we speak about Radar, we talk about the brand, we talk about uh, the core competency, and I'm going to overview that um, rather quickly. Uh, for those of you who are just um, maybe have never seen the Radar brand presentation, don't understand the basics. Um, a lot of what we're going to spend time on today is going to be um, what you can do to customize the systems. So jumping right in, I know we, we don't have a ton of time, and forgive me, this is the first time I've ever put this presentation on, so I hope it goes smoothly. Forgive me if we bump and uh, bump up and down a little bit. So first of all, the, bus the business, Radar, has been around for 23 years. I founded the company in the East Village of New York. We specialize in making beautiful interior space dividing solutions. The, the, the crux of the system and um, what makes it unique on a on technology level is the patented twin frame design. This is just a little example. Um, we use two separate frames that encapsulate acrylic or polycarbonate as a structural glazing layer. And when light hits the face, the edge glows like a ray of light, which is how we got the name. It's also how we got the logo. The edge of the panel glows like a ray of light. And we shorten that acrylic or polycarbonate at the bottom and it creates a channel for guiding. So for our straight sliding and pocketed systems and all that and our fixed panels as well, we use that sort of rebate to create um, um, a channel for the guiding. Now we started off uh, specifically in residential interiors, always creating something that's warm, matching the interior design or conforming to it um, or, or, or um, becoming a showpiece of itself within uh, the interior. Uh, eventually, about 20 years ago, we got into commercial interiors, changed the composition of the way the frames are made. Um, we also got into about 15 years ago, hospitality and hotels. And ever since then, we've been doing all different types of interior commercial markets from residential, commercial, hospitality, senior living to retail. So healthcare as well. So lots of different uh, applications for us on a market level. Um, so the brief overview about why people work with us, I think the turnkey nature of Radar, um, everything from the frame design, uh, the fully assembled, all the hardware, locks, pulls, um, tracks, hardware, everything engineered and available in one place. Uh, and it's all we do. We don't make shelves or tables or furniture or other things. We, we make this decorative, uh, lightweight space dividing solution. So you could find CAD and Rivet, um, maybe able to find that through um, Ace Lab as well. We have all of that stuff supported. So that makes it simple. Um, it's also a lightweight design. The twin frame design makes our product very lightweight, uh, simple to install, uh, a fraction of the weight of what glass would be for something that looks similar, which has helped from maintenance standpoint. Um, usability, ADA compliance. It's under a pound of force to move most of our panels. So uh, that's a big benefit. And also the lightweight design enables us to have systems with no floor track. So um, all our systems float overhead. Now you can use uh, a floor guide as a guide or as a sort of, um, it's, a, it's an option. You can use a floor track if you want, a single floor track, but all our systems are designed to work without them. And they really do help make uh, flexible interiors more creative. So lightweight also contributes to making the product easy to install, and it also keeps the cost down. Um, many different layers of translucency that are available. We'll be getting into that in full detail um, or in more detail in the talk today. And we're made in the USA and made in Long Island, New York, and we ship all over uh, the country and have so for over 20 years now. Uh, just as a quick look at the animated GIF that outlines all the different types of systems that we have. So when people think of a doors, Radar is not really a door company. We're, we do make pivot doors. We do make uh, wall mount sliding doors, but mostly we make um, sliding walls and door systems, stacking systems, room dividing systems, all different types with folding technology, stacking. And any one of these is downloadable and available, like again, in CAD and Revit. Um, so we make it really simple to, to just figure out what your solution is. Uh, on a technical level, architecturally, and also from an interior design standpoint. And that's what's going to be, I think, the most fun about today is talking about all the different things you can do to customize the system. So starting off with customization, um, we have a lot of different things you can do to customize the system. Everything from, as you can see here, frames, custom stain match, pain match. We're going to get into that. Insert layers, the glazing layers can be anything from opaque to artistic, uh, one-off, handmade, or a myriad of different uh, layers that you can use inside there. Also the patterns, whether it's a Munton pattern or a lattice pattern to create something beautiful and magic uh, aesthetically and structurally sometimes um, uh, is, is also a big part of our offering. We'll show you that in a minute. And then system configurations. Didn't have a lot of time to invest in this 
uh, today to go over all the different things you can do with the system level, but I'll show you some examples on how you can make systems um, that you may have seen in our animated menu uh, work together. You may have some need, you wanna have one system meets another system, that kind of thing. And from a hardware standpoint, basic offerings are, 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 are matte black and, and silver, but we have a lot of different um, hardware components that you can specify within our system uh, above and beyond the standard offering. And then there are finishes also that you can request. A lot of times uh, customers will or, or clients will specify hardware and we just make sure that it works within the, the style and rail of, of the radar system. This is just a quick example of a rather custom system. These are five foot wide, I think eight foot six tall, brush bronze painted frame with um, a charcoal drawing that was designed that was drawn by the interior design firm that was then uh, augmented and, and encapsulated in polycarbonate uh, over these eight panels to create an environmental graphic. And this is kind of an example, poster child of doing customization with Radar. Just a quick overview of the, this is just a snapshot of something you'd see in the brand presentation of our standard frame collection of laminates at the top row and real wood veneers on the bottom row. The kinds of customizations uh, that you can do with our system are very um, myriad. Um, everything from stain match to veneer match to paint match. You could do two different finishes on one single panel. Um, you can do with laminate line, you can do uh, a finish match as well on larger systems, on larger projects. Um, so there's a lot, a lot you can do and we're gonna jump right in. When it comes to custom stain, uh, the way this works is um, whether you'd select one of our standard veneers, like a walnut or maple or sapile or, or oak, um, you could give us a paint ch a chip, a sample match, a stain match, which we would then do uh, an example of. This is usually a, uh, a one-off, a one-time uh, extra fee for a stain match. Or, uh, and, and we would you know, do the, do the um, sample, send it out for approval. Once that's been approved with a sh signed shop drawing, that would initiate production. And typically production is anywhere from uh, five weeks and in custom stain matters, usually 10 to 12 weeks. Here's a quick example of a maple frame, standard maple frame that's been <clears throat> stained uh, for a particular installation where we wanted to match the millwork. So that was probably signed off on before anything got built. And you can see it, it, it fits rather nicely. Another uh, popular um, selection or request is a veneer match. So um, not just using our standard veneers, sometimes you're gonna want a particular cut or particular flitch. Flitch may be uh, a stretch. Sometimes we can't get the flitch, um, but we can, um, we can get really close. So if you give us a sample again, we can try to submit uh, something until you're happy. In this particular example, um, I'm showing a, a veneer match that's also a stain match. There was a particular color that was that needed to be achieved. So this shows the finished product installed with um, that particular saw cut oak design uh, for the veneer, as well as the stain that matches um, what the, the customer needed here. <clears throat> uh, custom paint, same process really. So this can be from uh, Benjamin Moore or Sherwin Williams number, or it can be again, a submittal. Submit something we would then, um, you know, create um, uh, a test and then um, have you uh, sign off on it before a production. And it would, um, you know, end up looking like how you want it to look exactly how the sample looks. So that's a very popular request. Another thing you can do with our system is uh, create um, an interesting um, um, duality, really. So um, because of twin frame design, it's very simple to affect one side and then affect another side in a way that that makes the rooms shine. You can see here, um, there's um, lacquer white on one side and a uh, clear coat veneer on the other side. And in this case, um, you can see, there you go, uh, white lacquer on one side and, um, and a really attractive veneer matching the millwork on the other side. So that's a typical... Um, it's not something we do all the time, but it's so exciting to do that with the twin frame design. I really wish people would do that more often. Uh, <clears throat> on, the, on the side of a laminate, um, for laminate, you're really going to be um, 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 more um, focused on quantity. Uh, our laminates, we have the standard line of laminates that are um, you know, in stock, but you can um, 
give us a chip and we can um, uh, look at a bunch of different sources to try to find the closest match with laminate. So that has to, that comes with quantity. So it must be over a hundred panels, a larger order in order for us to create <clears throat> an entire run dedicated for that. It's more like contract project. So now we're kind of uh, segueing to uh, insert customizations. So insert for Rador, you, AKA the glazing. Um, there are a lot of different um, ways that you can customize the insert. So we've been focusing on the frames and now we're really going to be looking at uh, what you can do with within, um, within the actual uh, translucent layers or opaque layers. Um, acrylic is the, um, the first example I'm going to jump into. Acrylic, uh, there are many different um, uh, products available on the market in an, open, in an open way. So a lot of commodity colors, primary colors. Acrylic is harder than polycarbonate. It's impact resistant. It's, it's um, scratch resistant and it can be repaired. Um, and there's just a lot of different interesting things you can do with acrylic and a lot of different sizes available. For Just to recap, for those who, who may um, not know, uh, Rador's panel size max is five foot wide and 10 foot tall. Not all of these um, particular colors and options that are available out there beyond our standard offering will be um, available in, in five foot wide or 10 foot tall, our maximum templates. But there are ways you can do that with for instance, multi-core, which we're going to look at how you can mix up the cores to create a, a, like a larger panel with a different look. Um, encapsulated polycarbonate, a very popular upgrade. Uh, this is very often um, specified through other parties like uh, companies like Threeform and Lumacore are very typically uh, companies that we work with on this and in OEM capacity. You know, <clears throat> if you know from whatever it is that you want to uh, select, you would just specify it. And uh, we have an OEM, as, a, as I said, relationship and we able to put it and quote it up, up front and be able to um, give, have that stick with the spec and be um, built with the panel. Now, there are some limitations on how large those um, um, products can go. A lot of times four by 10 is not a problem. It's a very impact resistant, scratch resistant. There's a ton of different things you can do. So many looks incredible things that you can create um, to fit in with the interior design motifs. So I highly recommend it. It is uh, a lot of times um, there's a class A flame rating that comes with that. That's not to say that Rador is a class A flame rated product, but the material that you specify inside can be. And they also uh, very often have uh, come with 40% recycled content as an included feature of using polycarbonate. Um, it is rather expensive. Uh, if radar panels start out life at around $1,500 to $3,000 a panel, depending on the system you select, um, this can easily add $1,000 to, 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 to $1,500 um, to any basic system quote from radar. Uh, just a, a nice example of a custom uh, encapsulated, um, the one we just saw earlier, where that charcoal drawing was encapsulated between two sheets of polycarbonate. Uh, dry erase, not a lot to say here, except that it's it's available. It's something that we can do. You can do it on clear, you can do it on uh, translucent, and you can do it on opaque. Um, and um, this is something that's oftentimes specified for commercial type projects. Expanded PVC, this is essentially replacing the decorative structural core of the Radar Twin Frame design with... Um, a quarter inch expanded PVC, which is used, it's very strong, it's lightweight, and it allows for applications of cork, mirror, acoustic board, anything you want to lay onto the face. It allows you to keep the light down, hold on to the structure, but allow you to, sorry, it allows you to keep the weight down, uh, but it's still structural and allows you to apply things like, like the things that I've just mentioned. The photo you're looking at is an example of a Forbo cork. This is used for team meetings, pin-up, designs, creative. Applied films. Applied films, there's a sea of different things you can do with applied films. Um, this can be done in our factory before the assembly in the sandwich, which can um, make for a, a little bit of a cleaner look and possibly more durable over time. Um, it can also be applied in the field. This is a fairly affordable, creative way to uh, decorate um, the panel. Excuse me. Um, 
and and it's somewhat affordable uh, compared to the encapsulated resin, which can be uh, a little more expensive. So this can add somewhere between five hundred and a thousand dollars to panel, depending on artwork and royalties or whether or not there's stock art. Um, but the process itself is fairly straightforward and and cost effective. Um, okay, so uh, multi insert something I mentioned earlier is something you can do. If, for instance, the material that you want to use is not available in a monolithic form where you're going to be able to make a huge four, four by 10 or five by 10 panel out of it. Um, or let's just say you want to break up, you know, opaque in one in one area of the panel and then translucent or transparent in another. This is just something that we do. And because of the twin frame design, we provide a, an edge, uh, like an edge that snaps in like a silver edge or a black edge or a veneer edge. As an example right here, you can see you don't always have to um, look at what's going on in the sandwich design uh, when you don't want to. If you have different materials, they're not quite the same thickness or, the, or some of them don't look good from the edge, you know, this is uh, the way we solve this. A quick word on artwork. Um, artwork is something that you can do. Um, you can have uh, original works of art put on um, our systems. Uh, this can be done in the field. This can be done in our factory, depending on... Um, you know, where your artist is resident. Um, we've done a lot of this in New York City, um, but this is something that can be done in locales at different job sites uh, around the country and the world. I think it's a, a very interesting way to create a more uh, interesting uh, relationship with local artists. And sometimes when hospitality or commercial projects come to town, it's a nice opportunity to uh, bring the community into commercial projects, it's something that we're committed to doing. Um, and, um, and the costs vary on this sort of thing. So now jumping into um, uh, pattern customizations. This is actually uh, a GIF of the original that started the company uh, over 20 years ago, uh, six by eight panels with a Munton pattern that's playing with uh, just translucent acrylic and allowing light and shadow to interplay between the different um, layers, as you can see. So, and this is a very affordable thing you can do um, with Radar. Um, really, and, and also, so really it's sky's the limit. You can draw up your own ideas. I'll show you a few other examples in a moment. So um, this uh, are the different, um, the different um, customizations you can do with patterns. Muntins, lattice, and a kaleidoscopic. What you're looking at is an example of the kaleidoscopic. And that's when there's multiple pa uh, multiple panels that interplay. But let's start with uh, Muntins. Muntins are a simple structural decorative um, component that are um, not just a lot of times people, when they see the twin frame design, they know that there's a monolithic layer that they think that this is taped on with some tape and it could fall off. This is structural uh, as with all frames, the way they're bonded through on the twin frame design is both with adhesion as well as mechanical. So there are dowels that run through this. So it's structural. It can be used as a handle. It can be used, as you can see, there's one example of the Muntin dying in the middle of the uh, glazing. That's um, not gonna fall off. Um, it's strong. Um, so this is really great uh, from a structural standpoint, mostly from a, um, a useful and decorative standpoint, meaning handles and just something nice to look at and, and marry into the design. So yeah, so sometimes the limitation on this is based on how, how, how heavy the panel can be. So if you do a whole bunch of horizontals, it can make the panel quite heavy. We do have a weight range we try to stay in. Radar is never really, uh, does, tries not to exceed 130 pounds of panel, so very lightweight. Um, there are ways you can achieve different designs as we'll show you in a moment. Here's another example of a similar uh, Muntin pattern. We'll call this one aerial. You can draw your own whatever ideas you have. Just running through this one here. This was done by the interior designer, a riff off of one we have in, in one of our stock patterns. So lattice is also a pattern. Um, lattice is more of a, a structure, a structural overlay. This is uh, not something that's going to be bonded through. This is gonna be retained onto the face of the glazing. This can also be done um, in place of glazing uh, in the sandwich um, where there's no glazing required and you're letting air pass through as more of a visual, as a visual divider. Um, but uh, this is a vector file that uh, you could submit. Um, you can work with us on if you have an idea 
We can help you creatively come up with something that you may want to do. Um, but vector files that are um, uh, Illustrator files or DXF are, are preferred. And then um, this can be um, either CNC or laser cut and, um, and, and it can match the frame and, um, and it can be painted. And this is just a beautiful example of uh, what's possible with um, with uh, at, with the uh, laser cutting of the lattice. Nice example here. Um, so kaleidoscopic, as I mentioned earlier, kaleidoscopic is just um, designing um, a, a translucent pattern that plays with light and shadow using either transparent or translucent, and um, and each panel has is intended to overlap the next one in a way that creates an interesting visual pattern. So, um, and this is subjective. It's really something that we like to work with you on if you have a particular vision, just to give you an example of uh, a competition that we did within our showroom. Um, uh, on, on, in the foreground, you can see a large version of the pattern. This is a two panel pocket wall system. So on the right hand column, you can see the sort of interplay that's going to happen with these various patterns. And, uh, and so this was a competition. It's just an example. Uh, now this is something that you can do or you can um, work with our team on for design fee uh, to create, working with you to create a pattern that you may like and you may wanna see um, for, your, for your project. And this is uh, mostly focused on Munton patterns here. This, this is not um, the level of detail that you could do with Lattice. Uh, this was abrupt. Okay, so I just um, um, I I jumped right into a system configurations, which is getting close to wrapping up the presentation, um, and then I'm going to open it up to questions because I have a lot more examples of uh, photos and um, and case studies that I can show you if you have particular questions in any area. But um, this is just an example of what you can do with respect to customizing systems. As I showed you in the beginning of the presentation, there's a whole myriad of different animations that demonstrate the type of uh, system configurations that we have standard, downloadable in CAD or Revit. Uh, at the same time, uh, there are times where you may want to make something work in a unique way. And so you can, with our systems, our design team can help you compound systems, work them together, augment, make them larger, uh, or modify the way the systems work in ways. This is a very simple example. Uh, on the right, you could see a two panel bypassing system. And below it, you can see a four panel stacking perpendicular system with a pivot. So that's five panels total. Um, now, this next slide just showcases, um, um, well, first off, actually you should jump to this. So this photo here is an example of a, probably a SketchUp uh, done by the designer um, and, and requesting what it is that they wanted to do. A pivot door on the right, stacking wall uh, to divide the space, which um, abuts the overlap of a bypassing system. And this drawing here shows um, the result of that conversation into a workable drawing that is now in production. This is an example of a project we have in production. Now I have more examples of elevations and plans, but this just gives you the idea that you don't need to just see the systems that you that you see on our on our website as a downloadable uh, limitation. That's it. That's all we do. Uh, we can do more panels. We can make them work together in concert, and we can draft uh, that and help you uh, with your planning so that you don't have to figure that out on your own. So compound them, augment them, modify them. Um, I hope that sparks some ideas for you. Now. Um, this uh, presentation um, uh, sort of truncated here. There should be a lot more that I could show you, but um, in terms of custom hardware, but I'm just going to use these two photos to, to use this for the subject. Uh, we have a three inch dial and a three inch rail, um, and we have a two and a quarter inch thick panel. So if you have a custom hardware request, um, as, as some of you may know already, Radar provides all the hardware required for operation. We also um, allow you to select ADA compliant hardware or locks or key locks or thumb turn locks, privacy lock. We have a lot of different things available that you can add on. That said, there may be times where you want, like the example on the left here, to provide uh, or to have a, a, in this case, a nickel, a nickel plated pole with a red lacquer uh, inlay uh, panel inside this pole. This is a, a custom pole. And this is something that we can do for a uh, jig fee. It's a template fee. 
Um, simple to do as long as it will work within the two and a quarter thick panel um, with three inch uh, style. So when it comes to poles, it just has to fit within that. Uh, and it can't be too deep uh, as to comprise the structure. Typically, um, one inch is the depth that we uh, prefer to not go past. Um, and then with locks, it's a back set is typically an inch and a half back set to land in the middle of the three inch style. So these are just a couple of examples of custom pulls that we've done uh, in the past. Now, uh, learning uh, how to work a little more with Radar, certainly you can go to Ace Lab and search our name there and find all the information um, to, to put you directly in touch with one of our designers. And, um, and you could also go to radar.com and there, submit a, a quote request form. Um, and that's where you can upload drawings as well. Um, you can provide us project details, which we would then be able to make a drawing fit um, that particular um, requirement. Production time takes typically five, four to five weeks for our in-stock um, products, as well as uh, 10 to 12 weeks for real wood veneer or custom, some of the custom stuff that we've looked at here today. Um, one of the things I think is important to mention with working with us is that um, a lot of times specifications happen and then the project gets purchased uh, three months, a year later. Um, when the time comes, the general contractor is going to want to have, let's say the pocket wall, radar pocket wall, brushed, uh, brushed steel with translucent sent to the job site. Um, they would give us a deposit. We would then draft the project within a week. They would then have that drawing for, for them to sign off on. Once that's signed off on, we can advance the tracks to the job site within a week or two. So, uh, the five weeks the 10 to 12 weeks is not something that can hold up projects. Um, we can get the tracks out to the job site. And by the time the panels are done, you want them to arrive with the furniture. So, um, so that's all timed out. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I think that this went quicker than our typical presentation because I didn't spend a lot of time going into um, case study examples of the different systems per se, but I'd love to field some questions if we have any. Yeah, awesome. We do have uh, quite a few questions. So uh, while we're here, a reminder that you can submit them to the Q&A. You can also raise your hand. So if you've got a long-winded question or like a project-specific question and you want to ask it out loud, feel free to raise your hand. I'll keep my eye on that and I can unmute you. You don't have to turn your video on. Um, but yeah, if it feels easier to ask out loud, feel free. Um, all right, so I'll just start at the top and kind of run through them. Um, starting off with uh, a question about how the panels price out. So I think you touched on that a bit, but yeah, maybe some more clarity on general pricing. Yeah, so um, a typical sliding door, uh, radar would be like a laminate frame, um, a laminate frame with basic glazing, three foot wide, eight foot tall, would be about $1,500. $1,500. Now, if you were going to be specifying that for like a contract project, a large scale project, 100 panels, 200, 1,000 panels, numbers can go from 1,500 to 800 a panel. Mm -hmm. um, radar will never be a $300 sliding door. So, um, but that's, that's a kind of an example of what you can get from a scale standpoint. Now, from a system standpoint, the basic sliding systems, uh, and, and I can just, I could share a screen for this. Um, let me do that real quick. Basic sliding system, something uh, to the nature of, you know, uh, wall mount sliders or bypassing solutions. Very simple, simple technology, easy to install, easy to operate systems. Those are in the $1,500 a panel range for small project uh, quantities. Uh, the sliding wall family, where panels uh, are telescoping, they're connected to each other. They typically have uh, multiple tracks that let the panels extend across a larger span start out at around 2,000 a panel. So a four panel system would be 8,000. Um, you know, uh, pocket systems are similar. You know, when it comes to the stacking systems and the folding systems where panels are going to, uh, for larger spans, and they're going to do more dynamic parking areas with uh, perpendicular stack or parallel stack with integrated pivots, something like that. And again, my, my example being a three foot by eight foot laminate frame, basic glazing would be more like 3000 a panel. 
And, and so all the customizations that we just went through would be in addition to those numbers. So if you were doing a stain match, you could add 20 to 40% to that. If you were gonna do a pattern similar, if you're gonna do glazing upgrade to polycarbonate encapsulated resin, something like that, that can add anywhere from 50 to 100% more uh, because glazing can be one of the bigger influencers for the budget. Um, does that help at all? Yeah, I think that sounds helpful. Um, but yeah, for I think Heidi asked that question. So if you have any other follow-up questions, feel free to let us know. Um, all right, moving on to the next one. Um, what about warranty? So Radar has been around 23 years. We've always offered a one-year warranty unless people request a particular warranty. And we've done up to three and five-year warranties for particular projects. If, it, if it's not pushing the envelope around something, we have a lot of experience with it we usually extend the warranty uh, upon request. All right. Um, how is the sound transmission quality for various panels and frames? It's a great question. Um, I'm gonna pull up an example of how to best address that. So um, Radar has been tested in ASTC that uh, allowed us to say we're about a 15 to 20 STC rated product which is not an acoustic wall. And a lot of times the way I describe uh, the Radar product is we're great at dividing spaces that have a similar function. Um, I have an acoustic example that I'm gonna do as a demonstration. Uh, I would ask that you just turn the volume up on your screen and I'm gonna play this um, so that hopefully you can hear it. And Bob, just give me a nod if, it's, uh, if you can actually hear it. Here we go. Great. So this is an example of uh, our office in, in Manhattan, showroom, a two panel pocket wall closing off the office from a conference area. Now there are gaskets in the overlaps of the panels that are felt gaskets in the overlaps of the vertical style. And so I like to show this because obviously you can hear the music the whole time. But what this video does is it just demonstrates how our product can cut down the noise. So if you're trying to create a focus environment within a similar, a similar um, use, um, that's great use of our product. If you're trying to create an autonomous function, something where people are doing something entirely different on the other side, the expectation is there's complete sound privacy, you would need an acoustic wall. Right. Awesome. Um, okay. Can the panels be mirrored? I noticed you mentioned that it can be a mirrored inset. Is weight a concern with that? So weight is a concern. Uh, sometimes what we do is apply a mirror in between two muntins. So if you wanted a full panel that was mirror, you could do that on a certain size panel. If you get to too large a panel, we'd have to apply it within like two muntins in some targeted area. Another thing is we are testing glass now with the twin frame design, um, monolithic glass tempered. And so this may usher in a period where we're just offering straight up glass doors um, of a certain size. They'll never be five by 10. That would push us out of the weight rating, but very likely three by nine or four by eight. Um, yeah, because acrylic mirror doesn't work to provide an authentic uh, an authentic uh, reflection. Uh, that said, there are some examples of a project we're working with right now that wanted to use polished mirror, uh, um, polished aluminum uh, as a as a material for a reflective surface in a in a gym and a, and a Pilates center, um, which we're just experimenting with right now. So there's um you know whenever you find a material you're interested in using with our our product, especially if it's machinable with a smooth surface, it tends to work with the twin frame design. Um, Hope that's helpful. Awesome. All right. Can style and rail dimensions be modified? Yes. So yeah. style and rail um, in the um, in the laminate line, uh, style and rail is fixed to three inch style, three inch rail, unless you order a very large quantity. And we are when we custom tailor the profile. Let's say you wanted a four inch style, four inch rail, or something in that vein. More often than not, a larger um, bottom rail or top rail is something that is more readily available in our, in our veneer line. 
um, because it's uh, the difference between, uh, and I'm going to share a screen again. Um, the difference is between the veneer line and the laminate line. In this case, you can see the laminate has a mitered joint and the veneer has a butt joint. And so the butt joint permits us to do larger bottom rails. So you can be much more creative in the, in the veneer side of things for even in large, in small, small scale projects. Um, and, um, and yeah, that's, that's an example of that. Let me see if I have another example. There's an example, larger bottom rail right there for ADA compliance, typically. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Um, another question about what acoustical ratings, uh, can be, can be delivered. I think we, we covered that one. Yeah. Yeah. I would just say that like, for instance, this is an example of uh, a cooking school in DC that used our stacking system to close off individual classrooms that are being used in an educational capacity. Mm -hmm. Now, in this case, our product is providing, providing a focused environment where people can uh, listen to an instructor, uh, focus on their work, definitely going to hear the class next to them. So if the, if the product, if you're, if you're in, if your uh, requirement is to create autonomous division, you need an acoustic wall that's going to be rated in somewhere north of uh, 40 STC. And even then, in my opinion, you really do need other considerations in the space that absorb sound and other, um, uh, whether it's soft materials, angled walls, um, acoustic absorptive, um, you know, ceiling, uh, mm -hmm. things of that nature are a lot to do. And gaskets and seals have a lot to do with whether or not the product is going to be um, um, more uh, private or not. In our, in our, a lot of what I would say uh, people do with our product is either they're using it in it sort of to create a focused environment in a similar function, or uh, they've also augmented, um, they've augmented it with like sound masking technology, whether it's uh, noise machines or, or, or frequencies used by um, sound, sound masking professionals. That's another way that you can increase the level of privacy that you experience with the product. Because the sound attenuation is going to be pretty uniform. It's a quarter inch wall, quarter inch acrylic. So it's never really going to grow past that. But um, but yeah, like this is one project we looked at where they're going to apply carpet to these classrooms in order to absorb more sound. Right now, there's just too much noise going on uh, between the two classrooms with the kids. Uh, and they're going to do some uh, baffling, some acoustic uh, flooring and wall material. Cool. All right. Um, what is the max distance that's allowed? Um, we've done up to 100 feet. Um, I don't really know that there's a max. The big, the big, the big calculation is uh, stacking area. So, like for instance, uh, this is a 75 foot run for the NFL Times Square experience. Um, this was actually a nice example of two different finishes. Um, there was a, a silver for the retail side and a white for the dining side on the twin frame design there, but it's 75 feet and um, the stacking area, it depends if you, if you want to build a deeper stacking area, you could keep going. And this is going to be uh, showing you the stacking area here. Mm -hmm. So uh, the panels stack straight back into that pocket. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see. Don't the bottom swing perpendicular to the door face when pushed or kicked? So um, floating door systems, uh, our product, when I was, by the way, when I mentioned pricing, I, it includes things like what you're seeing in this photo, a flush bolt that telescopes out of the bottom of the, of the door and into the floor, into a dustproof strike. So these are the sort of things that are included with the radar system um, and, and help it get its stability. This is a stacking wall. It has alignment plates as well as flush bolts in each panel that allow you to secure them into position. When it comes to our sliding walls, there is a, a telescope, telescoping hardware, the guiding system with hooks and a stop and a stop gate. So the stop gate traps the hook and that keeps the panels together. Now, in this case, you can see there's a little bit of movement. So a flush bolt would anchor the panels into position and there'd be movement on the panels, the farthest reaching panel from the, from the stable point. So some movement in our panels is expected, um, but there's many ways you can stabilize it. And some of them are with guides, like a little guide fin is an example. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other uh, typical example is the, um, uh, besides the flush bolt, could also be a floor track. So mm -hmm. a floor track is something that you can do. Here's a quick example. 
a flush bolt anchoring a six panel system. So that single flush bolt creates stability for the other five panels. And each one of those panels actually has a flush bolt. Um, so you can anchor it in different positions. Um, this is a, a little example of, a, of a, an optional floor guide that you can, uh, that you can specify. Awesome. All right. Um, I think you had touched on the fact that you were, you were starting to explore glass, but this person asks, um, why don't you offer laminated glass panels, which would be more scratch resistant? Um, you know, I, like I said, I'm learning about glass. So when you say laminated glass, you know, what my experience with laminated glass is that the face of the laminated glass would be um, equally uh, temperable uh, as a monolithic tempered glass. So in terms of the durability of the actual outer layer, um, that would be, I'd love to be educated, you know, send me some information about that. Um, most of the reason that we don't um, do um, the uh, laminated glass is because of the twin frame design. The edge is exposed. And um, so looking at that edge looks really marvelous when you look at a monolithic and the um, laminated glass is kind of not as decorative uh, in a quarter inch. Some of this beautiful stuff, like at the Apple store, you know, you see the big thick stuff that's laminated. That's great. But ours is quarter inch. So monolithically, you know, when they, when they facet and, and, um, and uh, bevel the edge, it looks beautiful as a monolithic. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not something we can't do. In fact, we have tested um, 3 16 believe it or not, four foot by 10 foot panel with 3 16 laminated, uh, tempered laminated glass. Wow. Um, very strong, very lightweight, um, but not, not to the edge. This was kind of rebated into, into the frame itself. And we use one of our uh, snap in edges for the edge. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of, you know, we could do it, but um, in our program, as we roll it out, it's really important that we are able to maintain the twin frame design and show off that, that pretty edge with the light refracting. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also testing uh, a thinner vertical. So right now, three inch style is the standard, but we're working on an inch and a half vertical because the tempered lamin the tempered uh, monolithic glass is so strong, protecting the edges. Uh, it's got more structural strength than, uh, than I realized in all these years working with acrylic and, and polycarb. So that's mm -hmm. kind of exciting because then it's going to be a really sexy vertical frame that we don't have to have because even on a large panel um i think our our panel looks great but when you're doing like a, a three foot by seven foot panel even a three inch looks a little thick yeah awesome all right um do you have a presence on the west coast for manufacturing and install we do ship all over the country um we ship to west coast all the time Unfortunately, we don't have a uh, factory manufacturing in the West Coast at this time, although we are actually talking to a few uh, potential partners about that because mainly because of the uh, freight. Mm -hmm. So um, on larger projects, not an issue, um, but on smaller projects, two panels, 20 panels, freight out there is, um, is, is more expensive than anyone would like. Yeah. Uh, but we, we do ship all over the country, uh, Canada and South America as well. Awesome. All right. Um, do you have any seismic issues you can address? Size issues? Seismic. So like a earthquake, I think. Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, my first answer would be that um, we don't have any specific seismic testing. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say about the, the design of the radar system uh, that uniquely, um, because of the... Um, use of acrylic and polycarbonate. Um, in my experience of 23 years, um, I feel like uh, the focus would be more about the uh, connections to the structure. And I would think uh, apples to apples comparing our product to a glass, a comparable glass product or any other type, you'd stand uh, way better uh, with our product because of the lightweight nature of it. Um, but the connection of the actual um, track to the structure would be more the focus and the emphasis um, than, for instance, the panel construction or um, the, the connection from the panel to the actual hangers. They're all overrated for our product because our product's so light. Um, mm -hmm. In general, uh, you can we've tested up to 400 pounds on our trolleys and our connections. So 
um, my gut says that we would be very good in, in an earthquake, uh, provided that the product would be uh, secured properly. But again, you have much less load to deal with. One of the big advantages I think that we experience uh, compared to like a glass system or glazing is that like panels like this are about a hundred pounds. If this were glass, it'd be 250, 300 pounds. Um, and, and that puts out just a lot more emphasis on structure, uh, and the load and, and the blocking and all of that. So while I don't have any official testing, I have a lot of confidence that our product would fare very well, um, in, in seismic tests. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Um, could felt gaskets be applied to the bottom of the panel to seal off that area? Um, we have used um, felt. We've also used brushes. Um, I'll just show you a quick example in this, um, a little more, a couple more photos from a project that uh, we recently did. Um, as you can see here, there are uh, brush sweeps at the bottom of this product. This was uh, one of the ones in the presentation I showed you that has the two different finishes. Uh, so, um, providing brushes at the bottom is, uh, is what was one of our standards felt, um, from what we have found the felt, um, doesn't accommodate the undulations in the floor as well. It'll either, um, uh, be too high, uh, or if it's, if it does go too low, it'll, it'll create too much friction. So, uh, the brushes tend to be what's what we use. Um, and they're anywhere from three quarter to an inch off the bottom of the panel. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure I need these right now. <laughs> All right. Um, does your company assist in sizing header members to span the door openings? If not, what is the overall sag allowed? Um, so deflection uh, or sag, um, we always, it's kind of an, an across the industry where, you know, what deflection, you really want almost none. Uh, no system really, especially stacking systems. Uh, where the panels are not overlapping, like panels that overlap tend to have a little more forgiveness. You can even have an eighth inch out of whack because the panels are going to go like this and they're going to overlap and that's okay. But with the stacking systems, they're very, uh, it's very uh, nuanced. For instance, uh, this is the edge of uh, the system that um, I'm showing you right here. Um, if there's uh, a 16th of deflect uh, deflection going on, you may have a gap at, at a different point along the, the opening. Now, a lot of installers can, um, can tune the panels into the, into the sort of um, closed and open position. So there may be adjustments to the trolleys made in the uh, closed position that you're seeing here. And when the panels actually stack, you know, they might, they might not stack perfectly, um, but they'll look, they'll be perfect. And when I say perfectly, I mean a 16th or an eighth inch off of their sort of alignment because you do want to set it up to be more in line in the open, in the closed position, right? But my point to you is that if you wanted to use, you know, I do a CEU on this, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> a lot of times with sliding walls that have no floor track or stacking walls, you can create two spaces, sure. Divide the space in half. You've got all the panels out, all the panels uh, closed off, all the panels stacked. But you can also create interesting ways to reimagine the space by having panels, um, some of them parked and some of them in the opening in different configurations. And you can start moving furniture around to create different ways to use the space and have people operate through that space. If you plan to do something like that, um, I know I've kind of gotten off on tangent here. The answer should be 16th of an inch is, is the sort of maximum deflection you want overhead suspended. Very easy to achieve with a lightweight system, harder with a heavier one, you need more blocking. Um, but um, but I guess my point is that the stacking systems are more finicky about deflection um, than, than for instance, this is a stacking system where the panels, you can imagine a 16th might really show a gap right there uh, because a 16th at the top would, would be magnified by three times at the bottom because of the proportion of this panel. That said, um, an overlapping system like this where the panels overlap, there's a lot of forgiveness because there's three inches of overlap in the styles. So if if uh, if you have uh, if the panels are off slightly, you really don't you don't read it. You won't be able to see through into the other space if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That was a long answer for <laughs> no, that and was and long. Um, all right, we've got a few more. Uh, so can you provide 
double glazing with or without space in between them? Uh, at this time, Radar doesn't do that. Right, Radar, we use um, a sandwich design utilizing quarter inch as the as the as the demising layer as the insert layer. Mm -hmm. All right. It looks like this might just be a follow up comment, uh, maybe about the seismic testing. But um, somebody says it it is the movement that is the issue. So, not sure what you're referencing there. But if you want to raise your hand or give us some clarity on that, feel free to. That I'll just speak on that. That would be. Um, if we were working with you on that project and there was a certain degree of uh, movement that was permitted or not permitted, that could lead to, um, and let me just jump out and show like that picture I showed earlier, um, <clears throat> where you're looking at uh, having a floor track uh, or a floor guided system. Um, a floor guide could provide the stability that uh, you might need in that application. Like in this case, these outer panels are fixed uh, and the operable panels have a, uh, a, a there's a um, um, a vertical axle mounted to the bottom of the panel, so the wheel is riding on the side walls of these of these tracks. It's not riding on the floor, right? It's just being guided. Mm -hmm. So you might need to do that on all the panels that are operable. Mm -hmm. All right. And it looks like the the person who had given that comment um, raised their hand. So if you wanted to add anything or or clarify that, feel free to. Uh oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh the question really was about the panel swinging and swaying and will it jump from the track? You know, I, I just said this is all speculative because I actually haven't done any testing on the seismic. Um, it doesn't come up that often. Um, but if everything started to shake and shimmy, um, I would I would much rather have my product swaying in with polycarbonate or acrylic than than with glass um for both the weight and the breakage potential in 23 years i think we've had two phone calls of you know a forklift went through one of our panels and cracked it you know a lot of times with glass you know things can arrive broken or cracked and things like that because it's brittle acrylic is very impact resistant um and um and so is polycarbonate even more so so um i i mean I, if that were a big market i would be excited to jump into it and maybe it is I'd love to talk to you about it if you have a project. Awesome. All right, well, it looks like that was our last question. So we've got three minutes left. If anybody has any last minute questions, feel free to send them over now. Um, but I just wanna thank everyone for asking so many awesome, engaging questions. Um, really appreciate everyone coming out today and uh, yeah, engaging with uh, this presentation. And thank you so much, Luke. This was really awesome. It's uh, always super fun when we've got some time to like go through case studies. You always have such like awesome videos to share. So I really appreciate that. Well, thank you. Thank you all so much. I kind of learned a lesson here today because uh, my normal presentation takes almost every minute of the time talking and I never get a chance to have so much interaction. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciated uh, the questions and I feel like I learned something today too. Uh, but with some of these questions around seismic and I'm going to do a little research. So thank you. And thank you, Bo. You always put on a, a great, um, you're always a great MC and uh, you always make it very pleasant to do the presentation. So thank you and keep it up. Well, appreciate it. Um, yeah, it looks like no more questions, but we've got some folks saying great webinar and nice products. So um, that's awesome to hear. All right. We'll let everyone go. Um, get an extra two minutes back to your day, but thank you so much, Luke and Gia. And thank you to everyone who came out today. Thank you. Thank you, Helen.